We'll hear from Robert Sala now, uh, Manager of Procurement Services with the Nova Scotia Government. I've worked very closely, Tracy and I in particular, worked very closely with Robert rolling out our program in Atlantic Canada. So he's going to talk about sort of his involvement with it. When I was going to introduce Robert, I, I asked, you know, well, so how long have you been in government? He said, can you just say a very long time? <laughs> <laughs> Let's give a warm welcome for Robert Salisbury. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Maureen, those are very kind words. I guess now I have to live up to them. <laughs> um, I'd like to talk for a second quickly about what I see as procurement and what I expect of our staff and where I see us going. Um, when I first came to procurement, we were more of a purchasing department than a procurement section, and to me there's a huge difference. Over the last number of years, we had moved into a full procurement process. Our staff is involved everywhere from recognizing a problem, getting requirements together, moving forward with uh, whether this should be a, a sectional view or whether this is a uh, more of a departmental solution, whether this is something we should be involving uh, other jurisdictions in. We, we are involved in the total procurement process to me, there's very seldom just a tender or, or an RFP. It's a, it's a process that is designed to get the best value and minimize risk to our organization. With that in mind, um, I sat down one day and thought, you know, as Maureen said over, uh, a little while ago, there's all kinds of new people moving in and older people moving out, and we are in drastic need of a professional procurement program that's designed towards the public sector and something that is going to have that complete procurement process that I looked, looked for. To me, it goes all the way from the things I just talked about out to the other end of making sure that value has been achieved with a contract that has not only been designed properly and negotiated properly, but also one that has been managed properly. One thing I'm sure we, we're all familiar with is what Maureen said, and that's a, a contract that we can spend days, weeks, months at in terms of developing, and it sits in somebody's drawer. And we can do all we want in terms of developing a good uh, contract. It's only good if it's acted upon. With all that in mind, I sat down one day and I, I decided maybe I should start to put down some of the things that we require of a procurement program down on a piece of paper. Well, I ran out of paper after a while, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to summarize some of them. And I'm going to confess I cannot read that screen. And this one's a little close, so I'm going to have to half turn around to read it. Um, this all began about 2009. And I realized, I had realized before that, that there was no existing uh, procurement training program that was, and these are the things I started to write down, that was public sector oriented, that uh, incorporated Canadian legal precedents and best practices. We needed something that included local examples, issues, and trade agreements. I mean, if you, let, let's, let's think about it. If you're, if you're going to do public procurement anywhere across Canada, you're talking about the agreement on internal trade. And I couldn't even find a program that went to that. We needed something that was of manageable size and cost structure. Budget to us is, is huge, as it is to you guys. We can come up with, we can come up with a great training program, but if none of us can afford it, what's the good of it? Um, we needed something that was adaptable for Nova Scotia government, the MASH sector, and the rest of Atlantic Canada pu uh, public sector. The provincial government in Nova Scotia is moving towards a relationship with all of our publicly funded entities to maximize value and minimize risk, which is where I've always seen procurement is going. We needed something that covered the entire procurement, <clears throat> procurement and contract management cycle, from planning through to post-contract evaluation. Again, back to that process that I said we're involved in, from the minute somebody has a requirement on their desk 
to the realization of value out the other end. I saw all this need, but I had a slight problem. I didn't have any money, and there was none coming. Well, that's never stopped me before, so regardless, I went on. We couldn't guarantee any volume of participants. Um, so, I took the lead in initiating the project and steering the development process. We could provide a large contingent of participants for the initial graduating class because I wanted every single person in my organization to go through it. In thinking through the process, I thought we could engage a local program manager to provide regional input and promotion. Somebody on the ground that would work with us as a partner to help customize the program and uh, maybe even deliver it. Wanted to engage a program delivery firm with a proven track record and, existing pro and an existing program that could be appropriately customized to our requirements. So we needed that core information and somebody that would work with us to make it something personal to Nova Scotia. We would provide endorsement and support in lieu of program, program development funding and enlist the participation of other public sector pro procurement, procurement organizations. In all of this, I guess what I was thinking was, in all of my requirements, was there an opportunity out there for somebody else? And the more I looked at our requirements, the more I was convinced that there was an opportunity for somebody to take them and run with them. So, um, I put out my first RFP looking for a local program uh, management partner. Now, you've got you to understand how daunting this was for me. Because up until now, I always told our staff and our clients how to write an RFP. I always told them how to put a process together. I always told them they had to be uh, uh, creative and look for the best value. Telling somebody how to do something and then going and doing it yourself <laughs> is a different thing. So, now I'm in a position where if this doesn't work, boy, have I ever got egg all over my face. So, we put out the first one, and it was the successful pro proponent was GKAI. It's Gordon, Kyle, and Associates. Gordon's company had 15 plus years of procurement consulting assistance to the province of Nova Scotia. They were a local resource with many public sector contacts across Atlantic Canada. And they were interested in becoming an instructor for the program, recruiting and training other instructors. That under my belt, I was getting cocky now. Got one down. So off I go with number two. Now we're looking for a program delivery partner. The successful vendor was NECI. I don't think that should come as a surprise to anybody. <laughs> they had 20 plus years of experience in developing and delivering procurement and contract management training. They were the publisher of the Legal Edge newsletter, partially <clears throat> They partially developed the program with ability and willingness to uh, customize to suit Atlantic Canada. That to us was huge. Because for us, we were looking for something that would be a great tool to move out to other jurisdictions, but something that recognized what people in our, uh, in our province needed to know. So, we now have three partners in the program. Nova Scotia Procurement Services, Gordon Kyle, and NECI. We wanted to 
further the goal of establishing common procurement best practices within and across the Nova Scotia government, the Nova Scotia MASH sector, Atlantic Canada, but also to provide a tool that could be moved out across Canada as well. We wanted to maximize the value of public sector spending in Atlantic Canada, provide executive awareness of procurement risks, challenges, and the extensive value that a properly trained procurement professional can bring to, can bring to those risks. We wanted to deliver appropriate <coughs> uh, training for administration staff, managers, and procurement specialists. And I just want to go to this for a second because one of our big goals is to educate senior management as to what a properly trained procurement professional can bring to their area. I don't know what it's like in your areas, but I know in our jurisdiction, most people don't realize just what it is that a procurement professional can bring. They don't realize the value, they don't realize the, the risk that they're at without a properly trained professional. And with, without that, our program is, is not going to get the success that it needs because we need to get to the top and educate those people as to why this program is important to them. We wanted to address Canadian regional, professional, and local issues, legal precedents, and best practices from the, public <clears throat> from the public sector perspective. We wanted to support supplier development, sustainable procurement, and other major government initiatives. When, when we're doing a procurement, I said that we wanted to maximize value. Well, unless we're looking at our own programs, things like supplier development, things like sustainable procurement, and those are two huge areas of value that we're not going to. And unless they're in our procurement program in terms of training, then most, procurement, most people don't know how to bring them into the procurement process. And there's a real art to it. It had to be affordable and, off and offered as soon as possible because I needed something that was going to hit the ground and run. The result out of this, we were looking to a certificate for graduates that would enhance the career development and opportunities for our staff, support recruitment and retention of qualified staff, create a community of procurement professionals across Atlantic Canada, eventually Canada-wide, and provide ob <clears throat> obvious value leading to a high level of adoption. I just want to go to a couple of points on that. Because I mentioned that our government was moving our procurement processes out to the publicly funded entities that were looking to build a relationship with them. The more of those publicly funded entities that have access to this program, the more that they can be in touch with other procurement professionals, not just in Nova Scotia, but across Canada, and that through this community of procurement professionals that Maureen is looking to uh, uh, put in place and support, the better off we all are. Because we learn from, we can go, we can take the course, but we also learn from experience, but we also learn from each other. And this, to me, was a key part of the program. The program development and rollout. We started off uh, back in September of 2010, and we had a fairly aggressive launch rollout, and I'm not going to read through all of this, but everything that you see up here, we've accomplished and we're moving on. The graduating course, graduating class, from our first rollout of it, I want to say two things about it. First, 
it was made up of not just people from my staff. It was made up from people across the MASH sector in Nova Scotia. It also included students or, or professionals from three of the other Atlantic provinces who had backed this program and were absolutely amazed and happy with the fact that we had put this together. Maureen and I gave a presentation to uh, procurement professionals from Atlantic Canada and they were, they were absolutely great with the idea that we had done this. They were so thrilled that this program was here and in place and they couldn't believe that somebody hadn't done it before. They recognized the need and they were fully on board with it. The, the other thing I want to speak about very briefly were the comments that we got back. The first, the first course that we did, we realized fully that this is our training ground. We're cutting our teeth on this, on, on this course. So we put it out there, we did the best job we could, but then we sat back and paid particular attention to the comments, remarks, and everything else that we got back. And the remarks that we got back were so glowing. The, the interest in the course from the participants was, it was really heartwarming. And um, both Maureen and I and everybody else involved in it knew that there were some things, yes, that we would want to change, but this isn't a course that's, sta that's going to stay the same. It's always going to change. We will always be on top of it, and we will always be looking for what needs to be changed. But the remarks back from the initial class, they were outstanding. And there's a lot of credit that goes to Maureen for putting this together and her staff that made this such, that, uh, such a success from the beginning. The, the initial offerings, overall eva evaluation rating was 4.8 out of 5. Consistent evaluation comments about quality of material, facilitation, and, practi and pr practical value of the program were very common. As of March 2012, two, <clears throat> two graduating classes from Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, PEI, and Newfoundland. 25 graduates thus far, a good mix of provincial, municipal, academic, and health agencies. The Public Sector Procurement Program Graduate Certificate is something that somebody can look at and say, I have something of value. There is a one-year complimentary subscription to the Legal Edge, and this is something that we hope participants will keep up. There will be, and this is the, the, the part I was going to, eventually there will be an exclusive on, online community of practice to encourage continued networking and sharing of ideas. When we started this, we had a choice. I could have taken the easy road and said, okay, there are programs out there, I can go with one of them. I could say that we can go with something that has national accreditation already, and that would be fine too. But I guess I wanted the world. I wanted my cake and I wanted to eat it too. Sometimes when you want that, you gotta go to the hard road. So we built a course, and then based on its credentials alone, we decided to go after, we, we decided to go after national accreditation. Well, we are now nationally accredited through the Canadian Supply Chain Sector Council as of October 2011. As I said, we had a choice at that point uh, when we started. We could create a program or we could go with the existing. We did choose the latter. Um, what did the process involve for me? 
And what does accreditation mean for uh, uh, procure procurement staff? Well, I'll work backwards. For procurement staff, it's not just our word now. This is a great program. To get national accreditation is, is quite, it's quite a feat. And as with anything, when you don't know what you're doing, when I don't know what I'm doing, I go and ask other people, what does it take to do such a thing? Well, a couple of people that had achieved accreditation for different programs that I spoke to um, told me not to, not to expect anything simple and nothing that was going to happen overnight and to look for criticism of our course and possible changes in the course and the fact that it could take anywhere from a year to two years to get. So with that in mind, uh, Maureen set out to do this. I tagged along to help. Well, there were several phone calls back and forth between the accreditation officers and myself. And the questions were quite detailed. But the more I talked to them, the more I learned that they, they were not looking to change, but they were, they were very excited about and very pleased with not just the course content, but the fact that we could show in Nova Scotia that this was already in practice. We achieved national accreditation in nothing short of a miracle of time. And to me, that speaks wholly to the value and, <coughs> excuse me, the value of the course. In 2011, we were the winner of the Leadership in Public Procurement Award sponsored by some magazine. There's three good looking people there anyway. <laughs> Um, to, to me, this was kind of the icing on the cake because we achieved, we got the award and we got word of national accreditation very shortly after that. Um, for me, yes, I'm pleased. But more so for Maureen and her, and her group, I'm far more than pleased because the, the amount of effort that has gone into this, the amount of dedication and, and the desire to make this something that had a core uh, group of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the program that could be taken across Canada and customized to any of your requirements because everything that we have added onto it for Nova Scotia is just that. They're add-ons for Nova Scotia. The core material, the base material, can, all, can be customized to whatever you need. So, the rollout to the rest of Canada, it's easily adaptable to include regional nuances. For example, adapted uh, our adaptation to Atlantic Canada, we put in areas about our Atlantic Procurement Agreement, which is an agreement between the four Atlantic provinces. We have standardized terms and conditions between all of the four Atlantic provinces. We put that in. We have Atlantic case examples and templates in it. This, all of these points were incorporated through appendices and case studies so that the uh, framework and the value of it is there to move any place Maureen wants. Back on the job, staff, staff are focused on an entire procurement cycle, not just an RFP or, an, or a negotiation. As I said earlier, to me, there's no such thing. It's just an RFP. It's a, it's a procurement process. The RFP is just part of it. We have an increased emphasis on planning, considerations, and risk mitigation strategies. And I just want to talk about risk for a second. Risk, to me, was ex exceptionally important 
in, in this course, because if you go to most jurisdictions, nobody has a clue what you're talking about when you talk about risk. When the you-know-what hits the fan, all of a sudden they know what risk was, because they're right in the middle of it. But up front, they don't know what it is, and they wouldn't know how to mitigate it. We have an increased emphasis on innovative practices, thinking of new and better ways to get the desired results. Our staff has confidence to excel in their job function. And there's creativity and cost savings, which are so obvious that it, it, there's no question about where it's come from. I had three or four of our staff come in who had taken the first, cor the cor uh, the first course. And one of them had been working on um, a new project for uh, one of our larger departments. And the department looked at this as being more of a, a, a sectional solution. And they were going to keep doing things the way they always did and throw some technology at it. And it was going to work. So the first thing is, my staff member that came in the fact that she would question the direction was a direct result of this course. The fact that she would want to be able to help in that, so in that solution was a di direct result of this course. And the solution which she then contributed to, and I, I won't take any credit for it because all I did was sit down and make sure that she had all, she had considered all the things that she should have on the table before, before she went back to the department, let her make the decision. And all I used were the basics from this course and said, do you remember this from the course? Yep. Do you remember that from the course? Yes, I do. Good. Now take those, put them together, and come back to me when you have a solution. She did, and now that solution for that department we're not throwing computers at it. We're not doing it business the same way anymore. And it's more of a corporate direction than it is a sectional uh, uh, solution. So does this work? Yeah, it sure does. And I could stand here and tell you stories like that over and over again from my staff that have taken this.